Hi creative friends, today we are working on our holiday inspired DIY kit. This video is designed to go along with the reindeer kit that you picked up at Curio or ordered from curiocool.com. It has the image pre-drawn on the canvas, all of the colors you need to paint along with me, along with brushes. All you need to do is get your paper towel and your water and follow the directions to create your awesome masterpiece. What I like to do first is start with the background. I normally take my smaller brush and I start by outlining right against my image. The reason why I do this is because I want to create kind of an area where I know to stop. I don't want to continue going and accidentally start to paint over top of things that are important. So I'm going to hold my paintbrush like a pencil and I'm going to very carefully start to work right beside my main image of my reindeer. Once you're done outlining, we're gonna go ahead and switch to the larger brush, this square brush, and we're going to paint in the rest of our background. If at any point we're going too fast, feel free to pause the video. You can even come back to painting your project another day, um, and you can totally let it dry in between. So don't let us rush you at any point. Now, the cool thing is that I could just paint my background in like this and just have it straight green, or what I could do is while I'm working and painting with my green, I could, instead of dipping my brush back into green, I could switch and dip my brush into my white. And as my green and white mix together, it makes kind of this really neat looking light green that I can use on my project instead. And you don't have to do this. You could absolutely just keep it the straight regular green but it adds a little bit of depth to it. If you wanna do something a little bit different, um, if you're a little bit more advanced, you can definitely do something like this. Of course, if you wanna, are one of our younger artists, you can continue with just using straight green. The antlers are pretty tricky, so going around them will be interesting for sure, but that's always why we start with the background first is so that we can paint over top of the colors as we're moving forward and doing the next area. So we always kind of build from the back to the front when we can with our projects. And if you have a younger artist, you can always outline something for them. You could also always trace over things with Sharpie first. That can help some of the younger artists so that even when they paint over things, they can still see it to trace back over at another time, or if you want to trace over at another time, you can do that too. When you're done, be sure you smooth out any of those big globs. We don't want to leave those on our canvas. And we can wash out our brush. We're going to switch over to our smaller brush now that we're done doing such large areas. And we are going to work on the brown next. So when I say we're gonna work on the brown, we're actually going to take our regular brown and we're gonna mix it with some white. And the reason we're gonna do that is to create an area of our reindeer that has like a really nice light area to it. So we're gonna do two parts. We're gonna hold our paintbrush like a pencil and we're gonna do the inner ear. We're gonna do this before we do the rest of the reindeer so it looks like it's actually inside. And then we're also going to do down here around the nose and the mouth. Now that we have the lighter area done, we're gonna go ahead and do the darker area next. And following the same pattern, when we're done outlining, we're going to fill this in Now we're going to do the red for our collar and our nose. Going to paint in my nose and my collar now that I'm done outlining. And one thing I'm going to do to help make this look a little bit more realistic is I'm going to take some of my red and my brown and I'm gonna mix them together just to make my red a tiny bit darker. I might even put a little bit of black into this too. 
No, I'll just keep it with this red and the brown. But I want to do right back here kind of this deeper reddishy brown to make it look like the collar goes back and around and that it's a little bit darker in the back than it would be up on the front here by the jingle bells. If it doesn't look dark enough, we could always add a touch of black in. But remember, black is really dark and it always takes over. So just a little bit is enough. I did add a little bit of black to it. I think it has just a, the right amount of dark to make it look like it's actually going back and around. Perfect, before we do our antlers, we're gonna do one last thing. We're gonna wash the brush out really well and dry it. We're gonna take some of that white and you might be thinking, why are we painting the eyes white? The canvas is already white, um, but we are going to do that because your canvas has a matte finish to it. Your paint has a shiny finish to it, a gloss. So if we just left the eyes undone, it would kind of look like you forgot about it. So we are gonna paint it white so that the finish matches everything else. I lied, I said we were gonna do the antlers next, but I really wanna do the gold jingle bells next. This gold is one of those colors where it looks nicer as it dries, the metallic comes out a little bit more. You can always do two layers of this if you want it to be a little bit more saturated as well. Now, for real, we're gonna do the antlers. And what I'm going to do for the antlers is mix together a little bit of black in with the brown so that it's just a little of a different look than what the deer's color is. And you could do your antlers. I mean, I know that antlers are a little bit lighter. It's just a very different shade of brown. You could even bring in some of this metallic if you wanted to make it look a little bit different. You could make your antlers lighter if you want to. You know, I'm gonna make my antlers this darker color, but if you wanted to do something where you were making a lighter color and adding some of this metallic into it, you could do something where it has a lighter shade to it. It's completely up to you. Obviously, it's your project. So whatever you think would look best is the direction you're gonna go. Your antlers are a little tricky. I'm going to start in the middle. I'm gonna hold my paintbrush up and down, kind of like this, and I'm just gonna try and spin my brush and I'm going to try to be as steady handed as I can be. I'm gonna dip back into my paint often. And the best thing you can do is just commit to it. Sometimes we underestimate how much doing something confidently can affect things. So if you're really nervous and you're real shaky, it's going to show the more confident you can be when you're doing these, the better they will turn out. I'm kind of flexing my brush a little bit too as I turn it, just to make it spread out a little bit more. And we do have to remember this is a cartoon. So you might have some areas that are thicker, some areas that are a little thinner, and that's okay. My brown didn't really end up looking all that much darker, but there is a tiny bit of a shine to it from the gold that I added in. I really enjoy that. I don't know if it's picking up on the camera or not. Now there's a lot of different things you could continue to do. You could take some of your green, add it with your brown, make a little bit of a darker green if you want to, and you could add some things to the background. Some people might wanna do something where you have these really fun, whimsical spirals in the background, just to add something exciting, just so it doesn't look empty. Of course, if this is supposed to be a reindeer, we might want some snowflakes in the background. So that's always an option too. Or you could even do both if you want to. You could do something where you draw some snowflakes, even if you have like a colored pencil or like a paint marker at home. You could do something where you put on these really cool little snowflakes. Silver Sharpie would do something similar. 
little polka dots if you want to. Very, very many, many different options. I could have just left the background alone. I could have done some polka dots too. And then I would say the very last thing we want to do is give our project a little bit of contrast. Um, you can tell that it obviously needs some pupils. That's very important. It needs its smile. We'll add some designs on the jingle bell. And if you want to, you don't have to, but if you find that you really like things to be outlined, you could continue outlining. You could do a lot with that. You could do all the way around the collar. You could do every jingle bell if you want to. You could also just give it a few things to show some shading too. You don't have to do the whole entire thing, um, but you can. You could also do something where you let this totally dry and you do some Sharpie. Instead of doing it with a paintbrush, you could also toss Sharpie on it, which is nice too. Um, it's really up to you with how you'd like to finish it. It's your masterpiece, you know, so you finish it the way that you think looks best. You might wanna name your reindeer. There's so many options, totally, totally endless. But thank you so much for following along with us today. If you're done with your picture and you wanna share it on social media, please tag us at Curio Cool. We would love to see the work that you're doing at home. Hit that subscribe button so that you can see more awesome notifications on projects, art kits, classes that are coming up and are available. Um, and we really appreciate you taking the time to paint with us. We'll see you soon.